Hey guys, on my way to Ocean Springs Lumber to uh, pick up a load. This is the load that I had mentioned was going to the Chamber of Commerce in Beaumont, but uh, it turns out that they're going to let us take it to the church that we're going to. We're going to Westgate Memorial Baptist in Beaumont. Uh, check out their link below. They actually got some online giving if you want to give and help out. We're trying to raise a million dollars to help aid in people getting reestablished in their homes. So check that out, guys. No, I didn't got them. I didn't been here. That's what took us a long time. Pick it up a little bit. Come on. We'll get you as close as we can.
Cave Memorial Baptist in Beaumont. And they have put together uh, over here all the clothes that are being donated. They are uh, sorting them out, laying them out for people. There's more on this side. Uh, just getting it organized and helping people. Uh, got food on the table here. And uh, just outside, let me go show you this with the water. On that side. So. So, so this church is really kind of boots on the ground, helping people out. And uh, I'm sure you've seen some footage already. That, uh, a lot of people here to help. And, uh, it's early in the morning, so slowly people trickling in, trying to get stuff. All right, guys. This is this is Chewy. He's here uh, helping out at Westgate uh, Memorial Baptist, and uh, he's part of the Cajun Navy. I'm going to let him tell you about what he's got going on, what he's doing, uh, and how he's helping people. Hello, everybody. I'm Chewy D. I'm with Democratic Headquarters, Cajun Navy, and Texas Navy. Uh, what I've been doing in Beaumont, Texas, is going to areas predominantly elderly and youth, the south end to the north end, that have been left for dead and abandoned. I have personally been going in and rescuing these people. Uh, I have been doing this for over a week straight. Tell us about what you guys are going through and what you're dealing with. Um, well, for me personally, uh, my home was not affected by the flood. We did have to be evacuated, but um, right now we are helping those that have been flooded. Um, our church here is kind of like a supply distribution center. and. Um, stuff is coming in on a daily basis and going out just as quickly. Um, everything that we got today from a trailer will probably co be completely gone tomorrow. Um, so it's, it's just amazing how much help we're getting, but we still need so much more. Um, and we really need more um, manpower. I haven't, I've only been able to get into a house um, for one day and that was five hours because um, I have little ones, but if we can work together to maybe babysit for others that are physically able just to carry a wet box out of a home back and forth for four or five hours, if, if one person can just donate one day in somebody's house, we would, we would make such a huge impact. And, um, in the neighborhood I was at yesterday, um, they had four to six feet of water in every single home, and there were homes that hadn't even been touched yet. An elderly just sitting in their driveway looking hopeless with nobody to help. So we just, there's just a huge need for volunteers willing just, just to do the grunt work and just to help. And pretty soon, um, compassion fatigue is gonna set in, and, and we can't let that happen. This is gonna take months to help people recover. And I know what you mean by the, uh, the, the, the kids and watching the kids. I know after Katrina, uh, the mud out crew that I was a part of, um, some of Keith and, and others, we went to a, day, there was a daycare center right in the middle of Jackson County, or in Pascagoula, and we went in and, and totally remodeled it immediately. And that's what they've done. They just took in people's kids for the day so they could go work on their houses and help us work on their houses. That's such a huge Things help. like that. So yeah, I totally understand that. I'm from Baytown, and our church was flooded and we had to get that and just and then we just broke out into teams so if you have a, a group of people that want to make a weekend of it or just make a couple of days just to come out and say where can we go and you can contact so many churches they have like our church had over 50 families that were flooded or just their houses were ruined you know so it's just breaking up into trying to go to those and those people that we did help out and just carried out stuff, dried it out, or cleaned it, or washed it, or, or scraped out sheetrock, and just the outpouring of love and that gratitude. You know, you get, you get to show Christ's love to those people. And you don't have to say anything. I mean, there were people that were witnessing outside, but you just have to just show it through your actions. We are His hands and feet, and so just showing that you love them, showing that you care, showing that, that they're not forgotten because the weather is gone because there's still the aftermath. So just just don't forget. So if you have if you have able bodies but no money, bring your able body. If you have 
funds, you know, be able to fund. If you're if you're good at cooking, volunteer to, to cook a, a meal and bring it to someone that doesn't have an oven anymore. You know, it's just if you, you, you forget about those things that those people are having to deal with. So. That's right. So I noticed um, I noticed before we came over, I was looking at uh, the web page for the church, and I noticed there was a way to give online. Does that help you uh, for those who can't come? But and, and, I, mean, I know a lot of people, you know, maybe they they're in a place that they don't know anybody. I'm sure there's there's people out there that don't even know anybody who's bringing stuff over and coming. Right. Just giving to the church, to the website. On yes, the church. That, that, that is a help? huge help. Yeah. And get some supplies, take care of things. Yeah, and there's several families here who homes have never flooded and they didn't expect them to, and several families don't have flood insurance. And so, really, it's a financial burden on a lot of families. Um, I know, I know. We've our whole city life. and outside, outskirts and everything. So, it's like water has never came this high in my life. Right. And, and it wiped them out. You know, it leveled and, their leveled their house or either just set, you know, flooded. So. I got to go yesterday and help some friends from our church. In um, in '94, the house got about six inches, and this time it was up over my head, the water line. So, um, it's just affected a lot of people who didn't didn't see it coming. So it's just it's a, it's real. It is. Very has reality real. set in yet? I mean, has it really sunk in yet? It took weeks for us to realize what. It's it's kind of surprising that some parts of things are trying to go back to normal, but it it's, it's surreal. I, I just can't. it doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a while before. Normal, yeah, normal yeah we're definitely not functioning normal right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. So. Well, guys, anything else you want to say? Um, thank you so much for yeah. the efforts you yes. all have thank done. Thank y'all. Gotcha. Just to emphasize the manpower, um, I know my aunt and uncle's home, uh, they did flood, and um, it probably took about 100 hours of manpower just to get their home cleared out before the demolition teams could come in and start working. So the the hands and the feet right. coming into work is very important. And that's what I've told people. That's one of the things that we had to deal with there that I know that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to speak from the experience that I got Dr. Katrina with you guys trying to put myself in your shoes was how important it was to get the homes that like with us there were so many homes that were just leveled but right. there were so many that just had water in it and, and those people had to find a way to function and until you went in and helped them get the mold out and get the water get all the wet stuff out elderly obviously you know like you said uh, and some people who aren't even elderly they're just not they don't know any better they don't know how right. you have to go in and help them out you know? Uh, people with special needs, things like that. Um, how important that is to have the boots on the ground. And I, I really think, aside from supplies, I think what you're saying, manpower is is the most needed. It is definitely the most needed. You know what I, think okay. it is. I thank you guys. I thank you for sharing your just sharing your time with thank me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look this. I'm are you going to put the Aggie thing on there? That might turn some people off. Yeah, that would. Well, no, we don't we'll, mind. We'll do from here up, and they'll think it's Mississippi State. You'll be okay. okay. I'll edit it out. <laughs> The Lord put this on my heart that we need more people. If you're familiar with Texas Baptist men, I talked to the coordinator for the Golden Triangle area. We need boots on the ground. We need supplies and we need donations. But what we need to do is clean these houses out before they get dangerous to enter. There's a lot of people that are moving back into their houses because they don't have any other place to go. So what, what the idea is, if you have any contacts at all, with the airline industries. We have an airport here that can handle the biggest airplanes in the world. If we can get a charter plane that comes in on the weekend, can fly from anywhere in the United States and bring 150 people, we'll put them up, we'll feed them, we've got places for them to work. So if you have any contacts in the industry that can talk to them about doing that, maybe we can get people to use their frequent flyer points to help those people come down. Young people come from universities. Get your props to give you a Friday off or a Monday off. Get a group of people to come down here. We'll put you to work. There's hundreds and thousands and thousands of homes that need your help. And we're, yes, we're pleading for the Beaumont Golden Triangle area and there's Houston. And we got Irma coming this weekend and we know the needs are gonna be there. But we have those needs here also. So we're just asking our church, you can go to our website, westgatechurch.com, westgatechurch.com. Or you can call our church office, 409-866-3417, 409-866-3417.
We'll find a way to put you up. We'll find a way to feed you. But just come. Go viral on this. Send it out on Facebook. Send it out on Twitter. Send it out on Instagram. Whatever it is to get the word out. And let's find a way to help the people that need help the most. I'm Grant and I'm in Beaumont. God is good all the time. <laughs>what's going on guys it is september the 9th um about 9 20 9 25 uh, we just got unloaded got the trailer unhooked um roughly um five days ago i felt led to do a drive over to texas i originally was going to go to houston and i've explained all that five days ago i was worried of getting enough to fill the bed of a truck to make it worth driving over um, and 24 hours ago we pulled out with roughly 130 to 140 buckets um, I didn't really count everything I'm gonna say about 30 to 40 bags of clothes probably a thousand dollars worth of rakes and shovels and tools to work with just gallons and gallons of bleach and food pounds and pounds of food hundreds of pounds of food. Uh, I really wasn't expecting that. Uh, and if you gave, you contributed to that, I thank you very much. It was very humbling at, at its best to realize that, uh, like I said, five days ago, it was just an idea that I felt God leading me to do. And I was worried. Uh, it was too fast. You know, sometimes it takes a while to get people together gathered up and everybody just kind of jumped in and, and helped me out and Keith out and, uh, me and Keith come together on it and we ended up going to Beaumont I didn't get footage uh, like I would like to the extent that I would like to have gotten for this video to show you uh, the damage, some of the damage that we actually did get to see uh, I got a little bit too close but uh, had a 24 foot trailer hooked to my truck and was very limited where I could go and look uh, as far as the church uh, we were there early in the morning, and um, there were only a few people there uh, at first. But, you know, when we showed up, uh, all that stuff I showed you in the video, when we showed up, all I saw was some clothes and some water. And that was it. When we left, they looked like they had plenty. And I do mean plenty uh, to get them through tomorrow and the next day. Uh, and hopefully someone came behind us and got some stuff on. So, I really hope you heed the boots on the ground thing. That was the thing. Uh, that was the the motto that I heard most was we need boots on the ground, we need people, we need hands 
and feet to go to work to help. And you know, I, I've mentioned multiple times about being on a, a mud out there after Katrina. But you know, as much help and as much things as, as I saw go out, that was the most. That was the best help, was helping people get uh, cleaned out so they could start over. Uh, till you get the old mold and, and junk out, you can't really start over. So the boots on the ground was the motto. So that was Beaumont, guys, I and mean, it was just one spot. That was a, a spot about that big of, of Southeast Texas. Um, every one of these areas are like that. But it ain't just Houston, it's Corpus Christi, it's Beaumont, it's, I can't even name all the town, Baytown. Uh, we come through a spot in Lake Charles that looked like it had got flooded pretty bad. And there was an area, uh, I th hope, uh, hope I got some video of it. There was an area uh, that still got water that we seen. Um, there was a van uh, half, almost completely covered in water just off the side of the road on a service road uh, right off I-10. So anyway, we'll wrap this video up. As of right now, Hurricane Irma is uh, rolling west like a freight train and uh, getting strong, getting weak, getting strong, getting weak. It's at the tip of Florida right now. We don't know what it's going to do. Um, and like I said in the last video, you go help people. You do what you can because you don't ever know when you're going to be next. And honestly, uh, give me 48 hours and it might be us. So I hope this video encourages you to not only give, but to understand that there's not as much negativity as a lot of people like to portray. Uh, yeah, don't give your money to Red Cross. Don't give your money to these, this one and that one. But you know, when you find an organization that has boots on the ground and people going, like I've showed you here, just in one spot in one area, um, hey, if you can't go and do and help, then pull out the checkbook, jump on the website, and throw them some cash. Nothing, nothing reaches people like meeting a need we just did a, a very very minute part of a large scale help uh and may do it again you know, we're gonna let time see <laughs> we're gonna let things unfold and see where we stand see what happens uh, but you know i'm not it's not out of the question to load up and go back so so i want to thank keith and his wife bethany uh, and, and her family, Bethany's family, who let us stay in their house. Amazing place they have uh, in Beaumont. Stayed in the house, the water only came up to the yard. Um, they were spared, and, and amazingly so, because what a home, what a beautiful place. But I um, want to thank them, want to thank the church, Westgate Memorial Baptist. Uh, I can't say enough, just what I saw. I'm amazed, you know what, we're the hands and feet of Christ. and. Uh, what a time for the church. Uh, Pastor Wade used to tell us all the time, and I, they'll never remember what you say, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So I hope you remember that today. I hope you're encouraged, and I hope you want to help. Um, like I said, me and Keith didn't do this for any kind of accolades or, or, or pat on the back, uh, but <laughs> we just felt we just wanted to help. Uh, I want to thank uh, Beverly Dees and. Uh, uh, Allison Cook and some folks with uh, my company uh, that reached out and um, helped us out with those buckets. I didn't get everybody's name, didn't get to talk to everybody, so uh, what, you, what you see is, is all I got the chance to do. That's the reason I wasn't able to, to get some hands on with uh, those that, that are just in devastation completely right now. Um, the ones you've seen here, they are in devastation. Uh, they have lost things, um, but they're, they have, they're rebuilding already and they're trying to help everybody else get where they are so love you guys thanks for watching uh this is to be continued hurricane irma stay away peace out guys